Welcome to part 3 of AWS Developer Associate Certification. It's always better to learn from trusted and certified person rather than untrusted source or uncertified person because learning from uncertified person can put your risk of passing this exam. All right, we have a very interesting question. Let's first mark the keyword. In order to automatically resize a thumbnail image by the application, we need a serverless architecture. If we scan through the options, then option B strikes in our mind because Lambda is definitely a serverless architecture. Hence, we'll keep option B and reject the rest. And if you look in the official documentation regarding the thumbnail image, there's an entire documentation on it. You create a Lambda function and configure a trigger from for Amazon Simple Storage Service, also known as S3. S3 invokes the credential thumb, create thumbnail function for each file, image file that is uploaded to an S3 bucket. The function reads the image object from the source S3 bucket and creates a thumbnail image to save in the target S3 bucket. You can have a look at this article regarding the automation and how to use Lambda to achieve the serverless architecture, even the Lambda resources for it as well. So in the interest of time, we'll lock B AWS Lambda as the correct answer for this. Okay. Okay, if we look at the question in a glance, then EFS looks like the correct answer. But here is a twist that no option contain EFS. So let's look at option D first. D says use instance storage and share it between instances launched from the same Amazon machine image also known as AMI. We know that instance store is used for temporary storage. As mentioned in the question, that the user uploads are saved in the local directory server here as it's mentioned for any reason the instant gets terminated for example if the instance is unhealthy then the data will be lost so this option will not satisfy the need of the question we'll reject option d now let's look at option a and b together both the options uses EBS. So Amazon EBS is like external hard disk, which can be attached to maximum of 16 instances in the same ability zone using EBS multi attach feature. But in the question, if you look, there is no mention of how many instances are there can be more than 16 instances as well. Right. Hence this options will not meet the purpose. We are left out with only one option. C says use S3 and re-architect the application so that all the uploads are placed in S3. Now, if we have all the uploads placed in S3, then any instance when spun into the auto scaling group will have the access to the uploaded data. Therefore, C looks to be the correct answer. And if you look in the multi attach, if you're confused, with the incorrect answer. If you are having confusion, you can see it's available only in the same LBT zone and certain multi attach enabled volumes can be attached to up to 16 instances that too in a nitro system and that are available in the same ability zone. So this was regarding the incorrect answer. If you had confusion and hence we'll lock C as the correct answer for this. All right. All right. Let's bring the heat to the snow. This is a very straightforward question. Whenever you see keywords, like sensitive data here it's mentioned highly confidential which is more or seem like the sensitive data or we can see something which is confidential right and there's a mention of cloud front as well in the question and if you see such questions where there's a mention of like sensitive information in combination of cloud front in the same question then think about field level encryption which is nothing but option a therefore we'll keep option a and if you look in the same in the official documentation as well at certain field level encryption allows you to enable your users to securely upload sensitive information you got to note this word to your web servers the sensitive information provided by your users is encrypted at the edge close to the user and remains encrypted throughout your entire application stack that was one of the keyword if you look remain encrypted throughout the entire application stack that's what we are looking and hence a is the correct answer for this whenever you see questions related to multiple updates in dynamodb if you read the question multiple updates can occur at the same time 
in real exam then two things should strike in your mind first is conditional rights in dynamo db and second is optimistic locking since there is no mention of optimistic locking in the option but there is a mention of conditional rights which we are looking for which is nothing but option a and so we'll keep option a if you look at the official documentation it's written dynamo db option a supports conditional rights for this operation a conditional rights succeeds only if an item attributes meets one or more expected condition otherwise it returns an error conditional rights are helpful in many situations for example you might want a put item operation to succeed only if there is not already an item with the same primary key or you could prevent an update item operation from modifying an item if one of the attributes has a certain value so if you are new to conditional rights so you can have a look at this link and you can have a look at this diagram as well beautifully explained how conditional rights work what is that is what required as per the question and hence we'll lock a conditional rights as the correct answer all right let's apply some tricks again just by using one keyword from the question we can eliminate all incorrect options in one go so make a guess appropriate keyword which you should look for the question demands the access to all the documents should be recorded for auditing purpose we know that aws kms supports auditing capability to ensure that option b there's a mention of aws kms also if you look all documents should be securely transmitted so that being said we need client side encryption for the data in order to transmit the data right so client side encryption also meets the securely transmitted and aws kms we know is meant for like can be used for sensitive documents and stuff so that brings us to the correct answer we'll keep option b and reject the rest same if you look in the official documentation it's written aws kms provides an audit trail so you can see who use your key to access which object and when that's what is required will lock b as the correct answer for this okay i will give you a tip which you can follow in the real world exam as well and you will find it very much helpful so just keep in mind we need a performance tool which can investigate the slow response just remember whenever you see such questions in the exam where you need to analyze why some service is slow then just think about aws x-ray that is a trick therefore we'll keep option b that is aws x-ray and reject the rest and if you look in the same in the official documentation it's written for uh, x-ray if you look that slow response times within your x-ray service map and there's a diagrammatic view of it as well you can have a look at this and in the interest of time we'll lock aws x-ray as the correct answer all right this question should be a piece of cake for you because it's exactly like the previous question only difference is that the question and the options are rephrased a bit the essence of the question is still the same therefore the answer remains also the same that is nothing but aws x-ray quick tip for the exam whenever you see questions looking for some performance issues just like what i mentioned in previous question as well then look for the options containing aws x-ray and hence we'll keep option b just like the previous question and reject the rest and lock it as the correct answer all right as a developer associate you got to be familiar about aws lambda and it should be in your fingertips so you got to prepare the questions related to it as well so let's first look at option b b says increase lambda timeout we know that lambda can run maximum of 15 minutes there's a limit to it so there is no mention in the option if you look that how long should the new timeout limit be let's see the complex code as mentioned in the question takes about 14 minutes to run and we have increased the timeout to 10 minutes then again it will feel right it will not meet the requirement of the question or the goal of the question that is more cpu power which we are looking for therefore definitely option b is out 
Now let's look at option D. D says upgrade to latest runtime engine version. Upgrading to latest runtime engine version won't increase CPU power in any way. This option is just a distractor. We'll reject this. We are left out with A and C. First, let's look at option C because it seems interesting. C says increase total number of lambda layers. Total number of lambda layers don't contribute to CPU power of the lambda function. Therefore, again, incorrect choice. If you look in the Siemens official documentation, it's written the amount of memory also determines the amount of virtual CPU available to a function. Adding more memory proportionally increases the amount of CPU, increasing the overall computational power available. If a function is CPU network or memory bound, then changing the memory settings can dramatically improve its performance. That's what we are looking for. We'll lock A increase memory as the correct answer for this. All right, this question is about RDS database. If you have read the comment section, you might have read the comments related to questions being asked for RDS database. And here we go. And here I'm covering just with your special request or as per your demands, I'm covering this type of question so that you get more familiar about real world exam as well. So let's first look at option A. A says it will further slow the performance of read queries as the cache cannot find the requested data. This is a very interesting question because if you look at all the options in one go, you will find that most of the options will seem correct, but we got to eliminate the incorrect ones. So if you look for the option A, caching will improve the performance if there is a cache hit. Cache will only slow the performance of the read queries a bit till enough cache data is generated to get a cache hit. Hence, this is not we are looking for. We can eliminate this. Let's now look at option B. B says cache will become expensive and large. This seems suspicious, these words expensive and large due to infrequently requested data written to the cache. So we can't predict whether the cache will become in will become expensive because there can be scenarios where there will be cache hit as well. Not necessarily every time it will be a cache miss. Therefore, it's incorrect choice. Let's now look at option C. C says caching will increase load on the database. Interesting. Cache will increase load on the database, but cache is meant to like reduce the load on the database. That's why people use caching. Anyway, let's read the entire option as well as cache is updated for every database update. The mechanism in which cache works is to offload database to some extent we know. As per the option, it's written caching will increase load on the database, which I just mentioned, which is definitely not true because Otherwise, no one will use caching mechanism in the architecture. We can eliminate this option as well. We are left out with only one option. Let's read this out and check whether it's the correct or not. D says overhead will be added to initial response time as the cache is updated only after a cache miss. This option looks good to me as cache miss can cause noticeable delay in data getting into the application, which will be added as overhead, which is what is true mentioned in the option as well. If we look at the official documentation about this, it's certain there's a cache miss penalty. Each cache miss results in three trips. First is initial request for data from the cache. Second is query of the database for the data. Third is writing the data to the cache. There are miss, uh, these misses can cause a noticeable delay in the data getting into the application. That's what we are looking for. You can have it read that is lazy loading. This is uh, very important with respect to the exam as well. We'll lock D as a correct answer. All right. All right. We got a multiple choice question. We need two correct answer for this. Let's first look at option A. A says use Amazon CloudFront with AWS WAF. We know that web application firewall, also known as WAF, can increase the security of the web application, but would increase the elasticity or the make it more elastic as required by the question. Therefore, 
there is no need of security in the question. We don't need AWS WAF or Web Application Firewall. We'll reject this. Let's now move to option B. B says store session state data in a DynamoDB table. As mentioned in the question that the application needs to be stateful. Here if you look, so the session data needs to be stored in somewhere and that is nothing but DynamoDB because we know that database is meant for storage since database or like databases like DynamoDB is widely used to store session data. This can be the potential answer. We'll keep this because we need to correct answer at the end of the day. Let's move to option C. C says use pessimistic concurrency on the Amazon DynamoDB. Pessimistic concurrency won't contribute to elasticity in any way. Therefore, again, incorrect choice. We'll reject this. Let's move to option D. Even though we got a two answer, it's always wise to check the last answer. D says use elastic load balancer with an auto scaling group. Load balancer in combination with auto scaling group will allow the web application running on EC2 instance to scale. So this again will contribute to elasticity as required by the question and which we are also looking for. Looks like we got our two answers and we will log B and D as the correct answer. So please, please, please don't go away. Let's meet in part four of the series.